Hello everybody and welcome out to Pod of War Retro 5th Gen Chat. Today I'm joined as ever by Matt Das. Hi everyone. I am of course here with Gizmo and I will be your host today. But first of all Chris, how are you today? How I'm you good, thank you. It's been a good, this time we haven't taken like a year to do this, the next podcast. Yeah. So you know, a few months between mm. this one, so that's good. So yes, what have you been playing Chris outside of the 5th Gen? Uh, playing recently, like the last sort of, w- uh, sort of week or two. Uh, Batman, the en- Enemy Within, the Telltale series. The yeah, second, that's the sequel. Uh, yeah, it's the yeah. second season. Um, I ended up mainly playing Bruce Wayne due to my choices on that. Uh, you know, I felt it was the right choices. Obviously no spoilers, because uh, yeah. people haven't played it. So I played some that. Played a bit of Nine, uh, Nino Kune 2. Um, I haven't gone back to it since like the first couple of days it came I'm out. I'm absolutely shocked that uh, you would say that, Chris. Yeah. Uh, play some Panzer D- Dragoon Auto on the uh, Xbox One through backwards compatible ability, so that's uh, pretty good. Panzer Dragoon will get mentioned in the next. Yeah, hour that's or so. a, a, it's a really expensive game now, so I bought the download version. Uh, looks really good as well on the One X, and just started playing yesterday uh, God of War on the PS4, uh, which is very good. I think I played it seven, eight hours straight yesterday. Which means you won't play it again. You'll uh, move on to the I, next I, game. No, now. I think this is move like, on to Yakuza Six. It's now. like really like sort of like one of those games that's like really grabbed me. So Good. I, I think I'm gonna be playing that until it's done. But then I'll be like, what are we gonna play? Oh, Labo is next Friday. So. Oh God! Well, the complete contrast. What I've been playing mm. since the last podcast. I've been playing Metroid Prime for an upcoming mm. show that we're doing. Oh, I did play a bit of that, but I didn't know if I wanted to talk about that or not. No, but we, we have played that. There'll be a show, there'll be a new show next week. Yeah. At the minute, I think it's called A Game Month, but yeah. I, I may change that. But that's coming next week. Yeah, but that's not a very great name, is it? It was probably like, you can't call it Gaming Book Club, because everyone's mm. just like, oh, it's not. So what book are you reading? There's mm. many books. Like, well, it's not a book club. It's mm. book club, and mm. it's tough. I need to come up yeah. with a better name. But anyway, that's happening next week. I've been playing mostly old games, and certain games which I'll talk about in a minute but yeah I've been playing uh, Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast I've been playing like random ass GameCube games like Crazy Taxi and stuff like that yeah, um, I can't play on Dreamcast uh, GameCube I just I don't have it on Dreamcast I think yet. it's Soundcraft that's it no probably not I can't remember really no I don't think it does um, I've played V-Rally 2 on my Dreamcast because I love V-Rally as you well know um, and then I've been playing lots of Switch recently been getting back into my Switch so I've been playing um, ARMS competitively mm-hmm. again Really getting good at that now. Really enjoy the multiplayer and the party crash modes are really cool. They've added some really cool leaderboard stuff now, so that's good. Yeah. Um, Splatoon two, I'm still playing. I'm trying to get my rank up so I can play league battles, but my god, is it a pain in the ass? Yeah, to play it is that game. Just just because you can't group with friends, it's the only thing I hate about that game. But I'm looking forward to the DLC, so I'll be playing that. And more importantly, which I know you've been playing, we haven't, we didn't talk about it in your section. Mm. I've been playing Football Manager Touch 2018. Yeah. A game which I've basically told you about i don't know nine months ago yeah that it was coming so now it finally come out a bit random they decided to do it this year i, I presumed they were going to do next year's game but i reckon it's yeah, just a tester that's why it's only digital i think it's just a test see what mm. test bed see what people think um i've been playing a fucking ton of that game i've played like 10 hours of that game it's already my second most played game switch so the second most played switch game i think yeah. already yeah. because yeah i'm doing gloucester city in the conference south because i'm a real man yeah in the playoffs Nice. I might even stream that later because I've got nothing to do later. But cool. but yeah, other than that, that's really that's really it. I suppose been sort of toying with Sea of Thieves this morning, mm. which is okay. But you totally need people to play with. Uh, saying that you've been playing on Game Pass, I did recently play and finish Late Shift on Game Pass. <laughs> late Shift. Yeah. Said really slowly. Uh, yeah. Um, I've heard that's good. It's a formation video. Um, oh, thing. Right. oh well, this is perfect. What a perfect time to talk from, about that. From Wells Interactive. Um, shout out to Martin and Tim. I don't even know if they still work there, but I shout out to those. I can't even remember which ones I've met. I've met like, a couple of them. I, I went to yeah. university with almost all of them. <laughs> yeah, I played that. It, I, I say play because obviously it's full motion video. It's just a film. You've watched it. Yeah. yeah, I watched it and then at the bottom you get like two choices. And you either like, select, press A for choice one or B for choice two and that's like yeah. the only game part of it. But obviously you make choices you kind of want to re-watch it to get the other day. And it's, so it's kind of weird because like, would you re-watch a film seven times? Yes. It was Mike Bassett, England manager. Yeah, sort of like in the row. So it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's sort of a, a strange it's like one. the heavy rain thing, I guess. They try and get them yeah, players. but I think that sort of works better in a game than a film. 
That did remind me, though. Yeah. To, you're talking about whilst I'm trying to... I've also been playing Cube 2, mm. which I'm also... I'm in the credits. Yeah. I'm in the credits wrong, yeah. and it's hilarious. So if you play that game and you can find it, screenshot it and send it mm. to me, because I always find it really amusing. The, um, a shout out to my boy Dave Hall for spending spelling my name wrong twice in the same line especially because it's, it's under quality assurance mm. which is the bit that I find the funniest bit they just get my name wrong twice mm. in the quality assurance but yeah I've been playing Cube 2 obviously because I've helped helped out a little bit it's a bit you know take everything I say about that game as a pinch of salt but it's pretty good it's a lot yeah. better than the first one Yeah, it's basically Portal it's good but are you in the credits of Ukulele? no but I didn't pay money to be in the Cube credits that's the difference <laughs> I didn't pay money to. I've I've not paid money to be in any Kickstarter thing like you. So apart from Psychonauts two, when it comes out, I'm actually getting the. I was in. A, I'm in the credits of a game that came out last week. Uh, Metaconi Republic on was it, Steam. Was it a like kicks back yeah, game? Exactly. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I am on the uh, credits of okay. I own that game. Not play, played it yet. Yeah, I'm but I am. I, am, you, I should you, be in the credits. You own a game. See, like when I say I'm in the credits, I'm in the actual credits. I'm not in the thank yous. I'm mm. actually a credit. Yeah. Chris does a thing where if you say something, he has to try and one up you. It's so annoying. <laughs> Ugh, we'll talk about that. We'll yeah. do another podcast about that. That'll be next week when you've when when you've played Metro Prime for an hour, yeah. and you get shamed next week and have to sit there quietly for forty five minutes. Yeah, then. I sort of I might need to host that if you two play that more. Maybe we'll yeah. see. Maybe make you play it more. We'll force you. Mm. Right, but anyway, fifth gen chat. So this is the. Kind of the penultimate gen we're probably going to talk about. I can't see us doing seventh just yet. Maybe seventh has got a chance. Eighth definitely not, mm. but seventh maybe. Well, I don't know yet. I don't think it's too soon. We're definitely doing sixth. Yeah, sixth will be in two parts. Mm. So there will be a Dreamcast part because simply there's no way me and Chris can do sixth gen and not spend an hour just talking about the Dreamcast. So there mm. will be a Dreamcast part and then the sixth gen part, and then we'll figure out what the hell we're doing afterwards. But today we're doing the fifth gen. We're not going to talk about. Because quite simply, we haven't played it. We don't know enough about the FM Towns Marty, which is the first one. Yeah, I've not even seen one, and I no. own like everything. Um, the Pippin, yeah, and the Amiga CD32. Yeah. Now, I, uh, what about the Playdia? Playdia doesn't is not a thing. So I get Christus is uh, <laughs> madness. Um, so obviously, <laughs> you completely throw me off. And obviously, there's a weird like the PC Engine sequel thing that's got like five PC games. F- 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 PC Engine FX, or whatever yeah. it was like, they didn't come out in anywhere but Japan. Did yeah. really badly. Because we just haven't played them. The Amiga C32, I've played quite a lot of the games on it, but I played it on the Amiga like 1200 mm-hmm. and like the Amiga CD. Um, the one thing with the Pippin is obviously that's an Apple system. Everyone sits, like goes on about like, well, Apple should Apple should make a console. Yeah, they didn't. It's crap. Yeah, I mean, the, only, the only the only where it sold well was in Japan when it was yeah. a Namco system. But it does so. have a really good version of Marathon. Yeah, but again, you can play Marathon on absolutely everything, including uh, yeah. 360. Yeah, was, yeah they really on 360. We're not going to talk about them. But it's one of those like weird, whatever. like sort of. I uh, just have a good version or something. Yeah, but like we've never, neither of us have ever seen one. Probably no, because if it looks at the first console deck of the fifth gen, that had really good versions of some things, really similar to the Pippin. Well, I guess yeah. people actually played it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the difference. I've never like I've been around games for. 28 years you would do the same I've mm-hmm. never seen a Pippin game case mm-hmm. in the well, I've never even seen a Pippin I, probably, I may have seen a Pippin controller mm. but I've never seen like a, an actual like Pippin game case so I imagine it's just a boxed PC box um, so what we're going to talk about first yeah. is one of my favourite consoles to be fair the five consoles we're talking about me and you all actually like kind of like Yeah. so it's going to be quite an interesting one but we're going to start with the 3DO interactive multiplayer Yeah. which came out in 1993, yeah, by the 3DO company, shock and all, um, run by some guy, run by should... Trip Hawkins, yeah, Trip which Hawkins. was a former EA um, bigwig, and yeah. when EA were not trash, but that's another conversation for another day. Um, so I suppose the most interesting thing about the the 3DO is that it's not um, self built hardware. In that the 3DO company didn't build the 3DO; they yeah. sort of licensed it out. Um, which we'll talk about later for like how well it did, but so Panasonic is the famous one. Mm. Uh, did the FC one, the FC, the FC one, FC ten, mm, Gold Star, was and well. Gold Star did one. Sanyo did one as well. Yeah. Um, so JCC. I think they did in Japan. Mm. Over here, really, is the Panasonic. It's the Panasonic ones. I think I don't think any of the other ones came out over here. I might be wrong. Maybe Gold Star did, but I think um, Panasonic is the Europe. Really, the ones that the Europeans will know. It had some interesting things. It had a pretty standard controller. It was basically a Super Nintendo controller. Um, which was which is okay. From what I've I've we've both played three DOs. Have you played a three DO actual controller? Yeah, I've played one. Um, so like they're pretty nice. Um, weirdest thing obviously there was only one controller port. Mm. You had to you had to daisy chain the controllers together. 
yeah, whatever. Um, we used CD-ROM technology, like every, pretty much everything on did apart from one on this list. Mm. It was an overall fairly powerful machine, really. Yeah. This biggest problem, had one big problem, Chris, and that was that it was very expensive. It was $700 at launch. Yeah. Which, which apparently in 2017 would have been... It's over a £1,000 now. Yeah. If you compare that to the, the nearest price to that is the Saturn, which was $400. Mm. So you already is starting out, you're $300 more expensive. And that is purely because it wasn't built by 3DO. So when so like when t- Nintendo make a console, they can sell it at a loss because mm. they'll get licenses from mm. the games. 3DO couldn't do that. And also they had a really low license fee. So I think it was $3 compared to Nintendo's $15. Mm. So they were made, they were, you know, like it was easy for developers to get stuff on there, but like they didn't make much money out of it. And that was really one of the big problems. Um, the 3DO, I think, in the last decade and a half has kind of got like a bit of a reputation for being shit. Mm. Um, mostly mm. because of like AVGN and people like that. Um, but to be honest with you, it's actually not that bad a library. I mean, you've looked at the library a few times. Yeah, and it's actually a really decent library. When I go back to the Pippin of Marathon, it's got like the best version of Street Fighter 2 on it at the time. So, so the uh, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and like the FIFA is on it's good, the Gex is on it's good. Mm-hmm. All basically, all the EA games plus a <clears> odd <throat> few others. Well, to begin with, they had a very close relationship with EA because obviously yeah. Trip Hawkins was still running EA at the yeah. time. So they had pretty much most of the games came out for it first. You had the very first Need for Speed. Mm. Like you said, Road Rash is probably probably my favourite game on the console, but it's a great game. FIFA and Madden were on there, look great. Theme Park, all those, that, those kind of things were really good. Um, but you're right, it had some really good ports. It had Street Fighter Turbo, which at the time was the best version of that game. Yeah. It had uh, Samurai Shodown 2 mm. as well, which is Neo Geo port, which is really a really good version. Um, the controller was a bit wank for it, to be honest with you, but you could get an adapter to use a Super yeah. Nintendo controller and stuff. Um, obviously had a lot of FMV games at the time had a lot of porn which is quite funny mm. and was well, in sort of now is very well known for having quite a massive mm. um, porn collection which is really funny but it had some interesting games as well it had stuff like Wing Commander which yeah. was really good uh, it also had the classic Plumbers Don't Wear Ties Plumbers Don't Wear Ties great game <laughs> best selling game um, but yeah overall the console was pretty good I mean, the best game is Gex mm. arguably and the best selling game is certainly Gex over a million and that was Originally, it was an exclusive. It was kind of like their attempt. It was Crystal Dynamics who made it. Yeah. And it was like their sort of attempt at a, a, mascot. a mascot. And it was it was a really good side scroller, to be fair. And the, the, that version of it is actually pretty good. It did come to everything else afterwards, I think. It mm. definitely came to PlayStation. Yeah, I only ever remember having Gex and 3D on PlayStation. Yeah, the 3D ones were on everything. I think they were yeah. on N64, mm. PS1, maybe even Dreamcast. I don't think so. Maybe it was a little mm. bit early for Dreamcast. No, I don't think it is. Um, but yeah, so our experience with the 3D. Well, Neither of us have owned a 3DO no. because they're very expensive now. Like they were expensive then. Mm. Um, like to, cause realistically, I'd want to get an FC10 if I was going to buy one, uh, the top loader, because it's more reliable. As much, though the FC1 is a beautiful console. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they are very hard to get hold of. Um, I, I've had quite a decent 3DO game collection, which I've talked on the show before, and I've emulated it quite a lot. I'm actually quite a big fan of the 3DO. Um, I think it has a good library. I think, mm. I've, I've, to us, I think every console on here has a good library. Yeah. But compared to the fourth gen weird stuff that we talked about, like the 32X yeah. and the Mega CD and, CDI. and the CDI, it has, it's far, far better than those consoles. Yeah. Really if good. it was like, if it is out the gen before, it could be like a really good Yeah, because it, it came out in 93, which is obviously very early. So it was like, yeah. it's a weird sort of time. I think it'd been, if it had been 92 or maybe 94 and it had a bit more time, yeah. I think it would have done a lot better. But yeah, it had it actually ran until 96. It had a really good library. Um, the games themselves are actually pretty good to get now. Yeah. Not expensive, really. I, I don't got... think there's anything real expensive. Not anymore. really. I Maybe mean, like the Wing Commander. Wing Commander, you can give like 20, 30, yeah. which is really for an obscure console is pretty decent. There isn't that killer title. I think mean, that's the biggest problem with the 3DO mm. um, in terms of, because obviously we are, me and Chris like to talk about collecting the consoles now and yeah. when we do these videos. Um, but that's probably the biggest thing I would say is there's nothing on the 3DO you can't get elsewhere, really. To be perfectly honest, it's worth getting. Like most of it's on PS One, mm. or it's on the Jaguar, or it's on something else. Like mm. I like Cannon Fodder, but that game's on everything. Mm. I like Theme Park, that game's on everything. Um, it's a cool piece of cool piece of kit, and it's a really nice collection. The, the discs and the, yeah. the and it's not a very really big library, so I suppose you want to try the full set. It's something. about it's actually about it's over two hundred, I believe. Yeah, but it's still um, quite small. And a lot of it is like I think the stuff that is expensive is like the weird like porn games, yeah. like the Coven and stuff like that. And mm. um, that's the same for like the Saturn when you get there. But um, yeah, it's it's a pretty good console. Would I recommend collecting it now? If you can get a console for less than one hundred and fifty pounds, yes. But you won't. That's mm. the problem. If you can, if you can find a console in the wild for one hundred and fifty pounds, like it's actually a pretty good console to collect for. It has yeah. good outputs. Um, has like RGB and S video and stuff. They built it to be a multimedia device, so it mm. has 
um, actually has stereo out ports natively yeah. on the back of the console, so that's really cool. And it has a built-in power supply, so you've got to worry about that kind of jazz. Um, I believe it's region free. Yeah. I think so it is. if you can get a step-down converter, getting a Japanese one's actually pretty cheap. But mm. yeah, I quite like the 3DO. I've been on this show many times and said how much I like the 3DO. But yeah, yeah. what do you think, Chris? Yeah, I sort of agree. It's one of those weird ones I've not owned. I kind of would like to own one, but I would want to pick one up for like 50, 60 quid, which isn't happening. No, it's not. And unless I saw one with like a really good bundle or something, like I went into like insane games or something, and I went for like 150, but I had like 10 games or something with it because no one else, no one's going to buy the game separately and um, sort of thing. That's the only way I think I'm ever going to uh, get one. But like you say, all the best games are on. On something out, or like the Street Fighter Two is the best, was the best version. It's been improved that uh, sort of since, and the money we spent on that, I can buy buy the Switch anniversary collection. Yeah, or it's, something. it's it's totally a console that it's like a showpiece console. Yeah. So if you want to be like, so if I were, so if realistically, if I were to buy it a three D O, yeah, I'd want to do videos on the three D O constantly yeah. to like get my money for it, you know. Yeah. But again, and it plays copied games as well, so you don't even have to buy the game. So that's the weird thing. If you can get the console, mm. it's okay. So that's one underrated mm. underappreciated console onto yeah. possibly the most underrated yeah. most underappreciated console I think of our lifetime yeah. and that is the Atari Jaguar well I know American people hate the way the British people say it because we say the Jaguar properly yeah. it's an Atari Jaguar um, the Jaguar came out in I believe 94 just let me check came out in 93 as well in America so we're only mm. a month difference with the 3DO mm. which is very interesting it was only $250 yeah. so already you think pretty good atari are quite a well-known yeah gaming company at the time they weren't hated like hated like they are now like well you now. say that they had a big had, gap of nothing crash. Yeah, the, the thing is that over it's really interesting because over here yeah they kept making personal computers mm. so over here actually atari was quite well respected and actually, mm. i think the jaguar did okay in europe mm. but um in america and then they had the video game crash and they had the 7800 came out like two years before that no yeah. one bought uh, but in Europe, at least, like, and they should have like the Panther was supposed to be the in Panther between. was supposed to be in between, and then you had the one after. You, had, on the you obviously drive. just had the Atari Lynx, yeah. And um, obviously, the, the Jaguar was, was developed by the Lynx team, um, mm. David Needle and MG Aisha, I think he was called, who worked for Amiga. Um, great guys, like mm. really talented British mm. um, programmers. Well, they might have done the 3DO actually. It might be um, Epix that did the Jaguar, mm. but either way, some British guys did it, both consoles. Um, it was actually a cartridge based console. Mm. Although it did have a CD add-on later on, we'll talk about later on. Mm. Um, came out did okay numbers, not amazing sales-wise. Its best-selling game was Alien vs Predator, yeah, which is probably the game it's known for. Which is absolutely fantastic. See, I don't know, we'll talk about that because actually, I owned a Jaguar yeah. in the nineties. I had one for about a year <clears> before <throat> my parents rightly sold it and got a PS One. And I never played Alien vs Predator, so if I was going to talk about the Jaguar's best game, I'd talk about Tempest Two Thousand. Which also, I absolutely, absolutely love, and I, and I actually did buy Tempest 3000 for the PS1 when we got PS1, because yeah. I love that game so much. But the Jaguar's weird, because it actually has a really good library in Europe, Yeah. Um, because it had some late ports, so it had Cannon Fodder, it had Worms, actually, and uh, Rayman. Rayman's the big one, I mean, I I didn't know that at the time, because I got Rayman Rayman's on PS1. Rayman's better on Jag, I think, on No, the, PS1 but... has, um, it loads better on Jag, yeah, but PS1 has just... the FMV stuff. Okay, yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, they pretty much think it. it's, it's an absolutely beautiful game. Mm. Um especially because the Jaguar is actually capable of outputting in RGB yeah. it's just not natively built in and the console is actually a really weird design it's got like, like exposed boards on the back yeah. for the SCART lead so many people just think that it doesn't have yeah. SCART but it does you just have to get these weird cables um, but yeah there was, there was a lot of games there was actually a really like, decent amount of games and there's, the biggest problem with the Jaguar was had a very complex internal system mm. which is a problem for a console later as well but this is more so and so a lot of people would use there was basically three chips there was Tom and Jerry, which are the, the known ones are the th- two 32 bits. Mm-hmm. And there was a Motorola 16 bit one, which sort of controlled it. Yeah. And that was the same um, CPU of a Mega Drive. So, what developers would do is they'd just make games for the Mega Drive chip. So, you had a lot of 2D games come out. So, like, yeah. I think at the time, like the worms account and follow. Exactly. Whereas at the time, everyone and was, Theme Hospital. Theme Hospital, especially, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone at the time was going about it being 30, 64, 64 bit. bit. That was the big thing. Did the it didn't, didn't look like it. No. Do the maths. Yeah. Which should be your. Totally should be your like um, Twitter thing. Yeah, you should have your face on that woman. Yeah. Do the mass. Yeah, but it should be on your your Tinder profile, Chris, <laughs> or Grinder. We don't, you know, we don't discriminate. But um, oh, you've lost my track. Yeah, but yeah, it had had some pretty good games, but it was pretty hampered by its name, I think. And Atari had no money; they were just pissing money at that point. 
there was a planned VR headset, which was actually very good, apparently, but that got canned. Mm. Um, obviously, the CD-ROM came up very late and had, like, 25 games on it. Yeah. It was, like, it was quite unknown for being very unreliable, very finicky, um, and the games on the CD were not good, yeah, really. Yeah. I think, like, Highlander's, like, one of the best games on it. It's it's, that's terrible, yeah. yeah. That's terrible. It's like a bad Alone in the Dark port. Alone in the Dark was also on the 3DO, if you want to talk yeah. about that. Um, but weirdly, um, much like the Dreamcast and the PS1 to a much lesser extent, the Jag- the Jaguars actually had a weird post life because of the CD add on. Actually, still gets a reasonable amount of indie games released for it. Yeah, and homebrew games especially. Even now, I mean, the Jaguar was only around for about two, three years, and that's twenty years ago. And people yeah. still make games for the CD add on. You still got an old cartridge game here as now. You get the odd one here and there. Yeah, yeah. same as like the Mega Drive and stuff like that. You still get them. Uh, but yeah, the Jaguar is it's funny. It's actually a really funny. Console. Yeah, I really like the Jag. Oh, I've always said it's like my favorite wear system. Yeah, in fact, it kind of makes as sort of a sense because Dirty Hands got you know you got your Tempest two thousand, you've got your Breakout two thousand, your Alien versus Predator. I quite like to have a very a very good version of Doom, a very yeah, good Doom version of Wolfenstein three D. Wolf, yeah, Wolfenstein. Um, there's a few other titles like that. Just just the thing is, I think there's only like. 15 to 20 really Tari, good Tari games. Tari Parts is pretty good. Yeah, um, and then there's like some real rubbish like yeah. Cybermorph. Of course, and the sequel to Cybermorph, which was on um, the, the CD. On CD yeah. drive. So we'll get straight into it. Would For collecting the Jaguar, mm. now I actually think it's probably better to collect for than the 3DO because mm. it's not quite as expensive. No, the system cheaper than the games are dearer. Yeah, because it's cartridge. Yeah. But you can get the console for I've seen them for about 150 mm. even a little bit lower actually for a decent bundle yeah um, it did quite well in Europe so there was actually more units than there are of the 3DO um, and like you said it's a really interesting console um, the hardest thing I think for collecting is to get a complete box collection is quite hard because yeah. of the cardboard cases yeah see like if I went out and wanted AVP I would want a box version yeah. I would want it with all three um, um, covers for the yeah. controller that's the thing we didn't talk about the controller is had a keypad really, had yeah. a keypad like on the there. clicker vision and, and then you had the these plastic slips that yeah. used to go over the keypad a bit like was it vet? No, was it Vectrace or something? One of the old consoles Almost, you used to put it on top of the The Vectrace you did, yeah. But yeah. The, Magn- the Magnavoc, obviously. Yeah, you put it over like the keypad and it like. It's hotkeys, isn't it? Basically? Yeah, hotkeys. And it would yeah. go, oh, this is the fight in like an alien versus predator or something. Like, oh, this is your camo for your predator. Yeah. This is the free you can name. It was, it was, name. A... It was kind of it sort of uh, clever, but you obviously find them quite often missing. Yeah. And that's that's, that's the hardest thing. I think if you're going to go cartridge only, I don't think it's that bad a console mm, to no. collect for. Um, I personally, I'm, I'm not that fussed by cartridge mm. only. I couldn't like my N64 collection is almost entirely cartridge only. Yeah. So that's not and my Super Nintendo as well. So I'm not that worried about mm. it. But that can be an issue for collect. If you're going to spend a lot of money on a game collection, I get it. You want mm. to get it looking nice on your shelf. Yeah, the hotkeys would definitely be one. And the hotkey stuff is yeah. Like I said, I'm sure you can get them reprinted, but like to have like an actual official one is. Yeah. It's kind of especially with stuff like Doom, where I know it works well. Yeah, Doom, and it, like I said, AVP was the big one because all three characters play differently. Yeah. So you used your hotkey and go ah, like this was what button one now does for that character. Yeah, and, and even if you didn't have that, like if you got complete box, you probably got a manual and stuff yeah. you can read. So I think in 2018, the Jaguar is probably a decent console to collect for. Um, certainly not on the level of the three we're going to talk about now just because of ease of getting it yeah but i'd say the jaguar is probably slightly more collectible than the 3do though i personally prefer the 3do it's a weird one jag you're gonna buy a cheaper console but dearer games 3do you're gonna buy cheap uh dearer console but yeah. cheaper. 3do is the big initial and depends investment, and against what ga- games you want exactly stuff. i think the atari has more games for it more like exclusive yeah um, especially stuff like atari carts and like yeah. Rayman what else did they need to come to apart from pc that version of AVP just just PC. Yeah, exactly. They did a new. They obviously they've done games yeah. since, but that yeah. version yeah, of the but game not not as good. No, and it has some really good ports. That's yeah. the thing about the Jaguar yeah. it has some really good ports because it's you know it was it was a powerhouse. So yeah, right. Now we're on to the third one. This is probably the last. This is a weird console because I it's between the sort of unknown mm. forgottenness of the other two huh. and the sort of mainstream of the the last two. Yeah, but realistically, it is slap bang in the middle. Of course, is the Sega Saturn. Yeah. Very strange console, right? So that came out over here uh, in Japan in 2000, 2004, uh, in 1994. Yeah, Jesus. Um, came over to the West in '95. Famously, America jumped the gun and had yeah. it early. Yeah, um, we still even had it earlier because it wasn't due till September. We had it in July in the mm. EU. Yeah, um, obviously, it was the follow up to the Mega Drive. Yeah, which 
should have made it really big, but yeah. as we'll talk about in a minute, well, it, it came out with no games. It didn't, yeah, well, it, it came out with essentially Virtual Fighter and or a gimped version of Virtual Fighter and a gimped version of Daytona USA. Mm. Um, sort of its main and Clockwork Night, I think was that launch title. Or was that very early? I think it might be. I new, think it's really early. Uh, yeah, and it just—I don't know. I think the, the Saturn's biggest problem. We'll talk about it straight away. It had no Sonic. doesn't have a Sonic game, like a true Sonic game. It has Sonic Jam, which is great. Yeah, it has Sonic R, which isn't even really that bad. If you actually play uh, it, Sonic 3D, Sonic 3D Sonic. Blast, which was also on. Uh, we on a UK podcast. It's Flicky's Island. Oh, see, I have it on um, PC, yeah. and it's called 3D Blast on PC. Yeah, just you're not an American. I know. I have. I have my. That's the thing. My 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 Saturn collection is almost entirely PC games because mm. they did PC ports at the yeah. time. Um, it's best on goes Virtual Fighter 2, which is mm. a great game. We deny that. Still, even now, is a good game just doesn't have that killer game and that's really its biggest problem I think it's it's got a lot of good games Yeah, it's got games people forget are on it so Resident Evil's on it yeah, Tomb, Tomb Raider's Raider. on it yeah. Wipeout two of the Wipeout games are on it stuff like that Symphony yeah. of the Night is on it yeah people but just only for- in Japan yeah but people just forget yeah. people just forget that it came out on it um, well in Japan it was still really good. in Japan it did really well Japan has like 2,000 games I think, yeah and it, it still had like games up until like I don't know 2,000 or something like now yeah, yeah, it's, and, it's, and I think JVC did like a really cheap, like a cheap one. I say cheap, but I think it's actually more expensive. Now. Mm. But it's like you could buy it in supermarkets or something in Japan. It was like really weird. Yeah, and it, it's it's funny because they got the Japan launch right. Mm. So the Japan, the Japanese had a nicer controller, yeah, which we then got later on because the controller it, it came with pants. Um, I actually played it at the time mm. um, with my cousin, <laughs> and uh, he had a Saturn. I've been playing Loaded, um, and games like that, and being like, this is just like a weird Mega Drive, and yeah. I was like, this is cool, but it's a weird Mega Drive. Um, yeah. V, uh, v Rally, um, Sega Rally was really good on it. Mm. Kind of games like it had some weird transparency issues because it wasn't really built for three D. No. Again, it much like the Jaguar had a two a dual processor setup, which was really hard to program for, but it was a two D powerhouse like mm. stuff like Guardian yeah, Heroes. Anyone and stuff. play any fighting game? Any Saturn. fighting game, especially but even the three D. If you couldn't ones. afford a Neo Geo, the Saturn was like your next best option. Like, and it was very easy to make region free as well. Yeah, it's yeah. You just put an actual knee play four and one in the back. And there you go. That was its biggest crime. It had this thing in the back to put a memory card. If they had made it backwards compatible with Mega Drive, I think it would have. Well, that have was the it. that was the original plan. Yeah. Um, and when we get to the, the Dreamcast, we have a very similar story about the Dreamcast. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, even when I was a kid, I presumed that was a Mega Drive slot or a thirty yeah. two X slot or something something that would have made sense. But yeah, yeah you have to, where you put a memory. Card. You just put a memory card. Yeah, it's it's weird. It has a weird memory. So you put a VC, you put a VCD adapter in there. That was in the back. Like, yeah, that was um, the back. Because it had a battery powered yeah. um, memory, which was terrible because the yeah. battery ran. It was a watch battery. You still mm. ran. It was really easy to change, but it would run out straight away, and then you lose all your saves. So having that action replay was really important for saves anyway. Um, but yeah, the Saturn was pretty cool. Um, over here, it came out with horrendous um, cardboard boxes. Um, as the, oh, the, cases like the exposed the game, cases yeah. were really bad and really again when we get to the collective bit it's really the big issue I think with Saturn um, over here anyway yeah. um, as for our experience like I said I played it when I was younger I did play it at the time um, I actually quite liked the Saturn at the time I played it with my cousin it was very different to the, the Playstation that I had yeah. um, had some really fun games like Virtual Cop was really cool um, I think uh, Die Hard Arcade was on it as well yeah. it was pretty fun I remember that was a great beat em up um, it had a, had a good library but just didn't have like Nice of, of Dreams is the big one obviously yeah had some really decent, like you say, like the totally really good arcade they, ports. They well. did fix, but it's mainly Ar- Sega arcade games, which is just and I, Sega. And I think that was sort of like that sort of game was dying out. What people wanted when you look at the other two systems, yeah, especially as well, and especially when we get to the Dreamcast chat next yeah. time, yeah, because that's you know, Sega was an arcade company, so yeah. they were always they were always prevalent. They did have games that weren't arcades. So they yeah. had. Um, the, both the Panda Dragoon games. Yeah. Uh, well, I had three, but the, we'll talk about the ones that we were physically able to see. Yeah. So Panda Dragoon and Panda Dragoon's Vi. Um, great on rail shooters. Yeah. Really, in my opinion, were way better, way miles ahead of Star Fox at the I, time. I was going to say or that. Star I, Wing, as it is. Yeah, and like, obviously, just playing Panda Dragoon also. It's like, it's so much better than Star Yeah, Fox. The, the, the Panda Dragoon franchise is one of those that I really wish that they'd come back to. I think they will. Yeah. The way the Sega are at the minute. I think they will come back to Panzer Dragoon. They also did an RPG called Panzer Dragoon Saga, which yeah. is the rarest game on the console, probably, arguably. Yeah. Certainly in PAL regions, it's very hard to get hold of. It's, it's very... From what I've played, because I've played some emulated, it's really hard to emulate a Saturn, so it's difficult. Uh, yeah, that's the problem with that one. They lost the source code. They have lost the source code, so they'd have to, get a, they'd have to ROM it, which would be nearly impossible for them to remake. So. Yeah, I don't know, really, because obviously... They, they could Sega, do it, Sega but it would just be a now, lot. Sega just like... <laughs> Put a Saga yeah. on it! It's like, oh yeah, it's because it's like this weird thing. But just, I've played... Panzer Dragoon Saga I've played because they release really strangely 
as far as I'm aware, this one, there was a demo disc that they came out for Bands of the New Right. And I'm pretty sure the demo disc is pretty much all of disc one. So I've played pretty much of all disc one of um, Saga. I maybe I can remember it like being like really like dark. I don't know if my TV settings are, are wrong or it's just like but it looked sort of old sort of thing. So, mm. but but everyone says it's like most probably the best RPG you've never played because no one can actually play it. Yeah, and the, the, the constant have amazing amount of RPGs. I think it was the Luna series on there. Yeah, um, the, the Shining Force games. Yeah, there's a few Finding Shining games. Uh, and there was no Fantasy Star, I don't no. believe, which is a shame because that's one of my favorite Sega ones. Yeah, it's really weird. Like you had no proper, f- you know, it had no did proper they, did Sonic. Did they port Luna? I don't know if that got on oh, there or not. But like, you had no, like, you had no proper Sonic. You had like no obviously Fantasy Star, and there was no Streets of Rage, which were all their biggest franchises at the time. And you had no Golden Axe. No. Uh, you said like all the stuff that they had on Mega Drive that. Yeah, like it was popular, yeah. Pop, no, no, Saturn actually. Yeah, there's no had. Afterburner, no Space Harrier, nothing like that. No yeah. Altered Beast, and no new, S- new Outrun. They had like the collections and stuff, but yeah, they they really struggled in that. Mm. They really struggled with, in particular with um, platformers were a big struggle. I don't think until like games like Gex got put into it later on yeah. did it really have a true platform. Obviously, it had Tomb Raider, which was which was a good version. It was actually built for Saturn. Yeah, and then they were persuaded to make for PS One because obviously Saturn mm. wasn't doing so hot. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very strange console. I personally like it. Mm. Um, I think to talk about collecting, I think it's probably the worst the, of the five. I think it's the worst of the five, but probably the best if you want one of the weird, the weird three. Because of its position in the middle, mm. I think if you were interested in a really obscure console from this era, an early CD-ROM mm. console, the Saturn is very reliable, mm-hmm. very very reliable, and is not that hard to get hold of. It can be expensive. But no, it's, I think the system is about hundred pounds for a good one. But like, yeah. there's loads of them. There's, mm. you know what I mean. And getting a Japanese one's really simple. Getting an American one, we just need a step. And playing imports is easy. Imports is easy, <laughs> and that's that's what we're going to talk about. Actually, the way to the reason to get a Saturn is Japanese imports. Yeah. Now they have some great games that you'd need to get repros for. So Police Knots and Snatcher actually came. Yeah. In Japan, so those are beautiful, beautiful cases they have as well. But you can get those quite easily repro the Saturn will run unsigned code pretty easily it's pretty easy to hack a Saturn yeah. to run again it's just getting the ROMs and all that kind of stuff but you, I've seen reproduction carts of, of Police Snorts and Snatcher with English language mm. if you can speak Japanese I, you should already have a Saturn because I think it has enough games certainly to run hundreds of fighting games and visual novels and RPGs and stuff that came out only in Japan. Yeah. And obviously, the, for me and you, Police Knots and Snatch would be the two that we'd want to play. Yeah, I would definitely want um, to Over here, if you're going to have a just PAL collection, the PS1's a better console. Yeah. And the 3DO and Jaguar are more interesting. Yeah. But if you want a weird one, I would recommend a Saturn. I would recommend yeah, a Saturn. Yeah, uh, it's a weird one, the Saturn, because obviously I had a Mega Drive we talked about first on like the last podcast. And I always remember like saying to my... I think I said to like my uncle, oh, I want a Saturn or something. I can't remember what year this must have been. It must be not. I want to say it was 95. But I... And he was like, nah, nah, you don't want a Saturn. It's already dead. What you want is a PS1. And then I just got a PS1. Well, when we get to PS1, I have a similar and th- story. And this is mostly 95 with 96. And my uncle was like, because I'm most probably the reason I want a Saturn. Because I presume I was reading like Sega magazines or something. Or because obviously I was a Mega Drive kid. So I presume I was buying Sega magazines. Well, the- so I was like, oh, I want this, you know, I want the Sega system, the new Sega system. Well, Saturn actually had a pretty big advertising campaign in mm. Europe because Sega was obviously, yeah, Mega Drive yeah. was the biggest thing in console gaming <coughs> for that <coughs> gen for Europe yeah. and the UK in particular. And Saturn did actually have quite a big UK presence. Um, and it's, like I said, the biggest problem just didn't have a temple. It just mm. didn't have a temple. If it had a Sonic game, mm. um, if Sonic Extreme had come out or if they just made a bigger version of Sonic Jam, I think it would have done really well. Even if they just ported some of the Mega CD stuff, like if Sonic CD was on it, mm. it's just something they could have done. Even Knuckles Kelly, it's just having a, like, a Sonic game would have been big for the console. I think that was the big problem with it. But like we said, if you want to collect one now, I think they're a pretty decent price. It just depends what you want. And yeah, it's just, I think, all the good games. Yeah, are a lot of the better games are, on, are better on PS1. Or, the, no, the decent exclusives are just going to cost you too much money yeah if you want it Pandragoon you're paying, paying yeah, 40 or 50 quid sh- for or it, the Shining the Shining games are as great as they are as well and you will need that actually. but again mm. Japanese games the Saturn yeah. so the penultimate one the one that we we had I suspect yeah. is the Sony Playstation which yeah. came out in Japan in 94 and, but for everyone else came out in September 95 which was when the Saturn was originally going to come out yeah. now the PS1 is very interesting now because Playstation is 
arguably the second biggest gaming company in the world. Yeah. Really, realistically, I'd yeah. say Nintendo is still probably more well known. Yeah. But PlayStation is the second biggest brand in gaming at the time. Sony was no different to Panasonic. Mm. You know what I mean? They were no different to um, Philips. Mm. They were just yeah. a tech company. So it was a big. They obviously had the failed deal with um, with both Nintendo and Sega. Yeah. Um, trying to get CD stuff, and we'll talk about that. I think we talked about it in the last one. But yeah. The PlayStation came out here ninety five. The PlayStation came out at three hundred dollars, which was cheaper than everything else, bar the, the Jaguar. Yeah. Um, because I yeah, because I always remember the fight. It was like the first E3 and the bloke from yeah. Sony just like that's all their conference was. He walked on stage. He goes. Two nine nine. Yeah, so <laughs> he walks right off the stage. That's, so like, what, that's so what, their conference. Like Sony's won. So what happened is the day before <laughs> the Saturn had announced, the Tom Kalinske from Sega America had come out and announced the Saturn was coming out like that day, and it was three nine nine. And what they did for the Sony one is they had a business guy come out first yeah. and did a really boring graph. Yeah. Basically about um like about twenty minute thing about um like figures and yeah. stuff like that, and then. The, the Sony of America guy literally came on stage said 299 walked off big cheer yeah. Sony have always been good at that and that's yeah. why they always go last I think that's mm. why they've always done it and <laughs> they do it well um, so yeah it came out it was a lot cheaper Yeah, it was a couple years in so it, the 3D was good it actually had a really bad launch lineup mm. launch lineup for the PS1 was actually not very impressive but Sony was smart they had it so you could play also you had CD-ROMs you could play music CDs Yeah. And I remember in the UK that was big because the music scene over here at that point, the sort of like the weird '90s techno mm. dance thing, was really taking off. And so a PlayStation was a good CD player and it had like the um, visual stuff. Yeah, um, had had like memory cards and stuff. But really, for me, I think the game that really the best selling game is Gran Turismo One. Over ten million. No, no, not, not two. Not two. No, the first one is over ten million sold, which is huge, mm. big in Europe. For me, the first game that really hooked me into mm. the PlayStation when we talk about experiences, Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. Now this is the thing at the time. At the time, no one argued with Nintendo when it came to platformers, but the PlayStation had three or four really good mascot platformers, different series mascot like Spyro the Dragon. Eventually, you did get Gex. Mm. You know what I mean? You had like Ape Escape, which I know is slightly different, but you had games like that come over, and. It was just a really good console for that. It was it was built for three D. It did three D running really well. So you got Ridge yeah. Racer, um, V Rally was one of the first games I played on it. Driving games always looked great, and it was very cheap to make as well. It was cheap, easy to program for. Sony really helped everyone, and so you just had lots and lots of games. And it was one of the best selling consoles of all time. Yeah, because the PlayStation sold on its own more than the gen before combined. Yeah, and it was just so. I think good. this is the gen. Like I don't think gaming was sort of getting big with the. In Mega Drive and like the, like the SNES and that, and then you had like the Super Mario movies and that. But I think like this gen is what made gaming like well, really big. And like my nan and granddad the other day went and saw Tomb Raider in pictures. Never played a game, but they know who Lara Croft is, yeah. sort of thing. Well, the, th- the thing about the PlayStation is it went for Sega's mm-hmm. um, teenager demographic. Yeah. Um, and even when Sega did it, like the Mega Drive was a two D sprite game, yeah. sprite games. Like in the most parts, it was hard to really catch like the t- like the cool edgy teenager. Whereas the PlayStation could have 3D graphics, could have FMVs, could have blood, could have these longer games with more intricate stories like we talked about before. Yeah. The move away from arcade yeah. really helped Sony. They got some very key developers. Early on, they got Square, which is the big one, yeah. um, the Final Fantasy series, which people people really forget. That was the first official Final Fantasy game we had over here. We had Mystic Quest with a different name yeah. on S- 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 NES, yeah. but like the first actual Final Fantasy it was, was seven. 7. It was huge in Europe. I remember at the time, like I was 7 years old, my best friend played it, and I remember going to his house and um, watching him play it, and it was I'd never seen anything like it. Like, four, like three discs, the, the 7, it was just insane. Yeah. You had Metal Gear Solid, which was like a movie. Yeah. Like, it really was. No one had done games like that at the time. As well as the Crash Bandicoot, you had the fantastic driving games, like Gran Turismo. No one did a game like that. No one did that simulation game with that much depth for driving. Like, no one did. And it was just game after game after game. And like I said, it was so cheap to develop yeah, for. Yeah, and they had, like, the Japanese, like, support on it. You know, you had your Square, your Bandai, your Namco, uh, your Capcom, Capcom put a lot of games on it, yeah. And stuff like that. It's like Resident Evil was huge on it. Had Silent Hill. Resident Evil was massive. Silent Hill was Castlevania. massive. Castlevania. Castlevania was massive. You had stuff like Tony Hawk's taking off, because it was that... Because um, it ran for quite a long time, the PS1. Yeah. It ran for, like, five or six years as the main console. And it had that jackass-era stuff. Like, me and you were young... Yeah teenagers really that time we were getting to that point and like having tony hawks and having just that kind of game and having tekken and having oh, the, tekken it, had the good, so good. it had the good arcade games as well it could it could have its cake and it could eat it yeah it was such a great console for that and it was it was a 
it was a move but because very quickly they actually dropped the price to 199 in america which was about 149 over here so it was very cheap mm. so ever i mean i grew up everyone had a ps1 yeah everyone had a ps1 because it was just so cheap your dad like my dad used to buy it um mm. bought one um and played toka race driving on it yeah he even tells me the story. The story of my experience of the PlayStation 1 is he went to the shop in 1997 yeah. to buy an N64 yeah. for us for Christmas. Me and my little brother, we were playing Super Nintendo at the time. So he went to get an N64 and he bumped into his friend and said, no, no, mate. The PlayStation was £100 by that point. Yeah. This is the console you want to get. So Christmas Christmas Day 97, we had Sony PlayStation, Rayman, V-Rally, a memory card. And it was amazing. And Worms 2, sorry, mm. as well. And it was just insane. Yeah. You know what I mean? And... That's really what you know. That turned a lot of Sega. It turned most of the Sega kids over. Yeah, I will say. And a lot yeah, of like I was guys. saying about me, like I was mostly reading Sega magazines, wanting the Mega Drive. My uncle was uh, well, I had a Mega Drive. Said I wanted it. It's out of my uncle's like, no, you don't want them. It's already dead. Mm-hmm. And you won't be able to get games. And then I remember like my uncle turning up one night with a PlayStation while there, no games. I go to the video shop. <laughs> I'm old. Yeah. Go to the video shop. Renting Tomb Raider, I remember I was like, well, I have a side for six, Tomb Raider what was a 15? This is when no one cared about age rating. It was, actually didn't have a Peggy rating, had a had a film rating Yeah. That, at that time, I believe. Yeah, so when it rented Tomb Raider and bought a memory card, that, that was my first experience with the PS1. And the PS1, like, is such a nostalgia console here in the UK, because mm-hmm. if you put, you play that, in, like, and I know we're named after a PlayStation. We began as a PlayStation podcast. Yeah. But the nostalgia of putting a PlayStation One on and having hearing that familiar sound mm. come up, um, and like I actually, so the PS One was actually very unreliable mm. as well. So I actually have a, the place. Sorry, the PlayStation was very unreliable. I bought PS One mm. um, years later for about sixty pounds. They did a smaller version. They had the DualShock yeah. came out by then. So it's beautiful console, which I just still have in the corner. It doesn't work, but I still have it in the corner. And they would just keep making, they keep pumping our games, and yeah. they just Sony were just hitting it, hitting it every time, and, in, and that's why we, when we get to the next one, we get to the PS2, they were just had such a market share yeah. by that point. Um, we things like PlayStation was easy to like chip and stuff. I remember I, I had a remember I had an like an Australian chip one, so it's easy. To we play had cop- a we had a chip one. It's cop- what it means by cop- chip is it it could be modded to play unsigned yeah. code, and yeah. the reason it, the reason it was so easy, um, because it was very easy to program for and it was basically like a PC architecture mm-hmm. almost um, and it was so popular that people would make so like this sounds really silly but like it's actually easier to mod an American N64 to play Japanese games yeah. and just cut some plastic out but because the PlayStation was so popular it was it was widely available you could get it shipped I remember um, mm-hmm. my dad had a friend who was a policeman so mm-hmm. well, used to give us a list of games and would go and yeah. pawn that's how I played Crash Team Racing yeah. um Obviously, the PlayStation One was the first console that had readily available RGB SCART, mm. which made games look really clear. Even today, if you've got a PS, if you want to play a PS One on a PS One, totally get an RGB SCART cable. Cost like two quid. It was like I said, it was the most popular console. So remember that everyone made memory cards. Yeah, remember that everyone made controllers. I've got an electronic boutiques controller. I've got a mm. fighting controller with the the R, the trigger buttons on the front. Yeah. And, you know, like everyone made Mad Cats were huge at the time. Really making stuff like that. And, it was just a great console because it was so popular. Yeah, it was like I was saying, like the Saturn. Like I can't remember seeing Saturn games to rent in the video shop. PS One games, like and they were cheaper. And that's that's the thing as and well. And I used to just go in there and rent when games. We, when we talk about the next console, the PS One games because they were CD, yeah. um, were a lot cheaper to buy. Like I remember <laughs> games coming out of thirty nine ninety nine, twenty nine ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine. Because it was so cheap for companies to make these games that yeah. you could keep, and that's ultimately why it won was the CD drive. Yeah. Um. Overall, in terms of collecting PlayStation One, it's actually a funny one because I would totally say yes, collect PS One. But of all these consoles, probably it's probably the easiest one to play the games elsewhere now mm. because almost all those games are available on every other Sony platform, or they've had remakes or they've had enhanced ports. So Metal Gear Solid, you can get. I know it's different. You can get the GameCube version, or yeah, you can get the PS One version on PSP, PS Vita, PS Three. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean? same for Final Fantasy Seven. It's actually there's an enhanced port on PS Four, Final Fantasy Nine, enhanced port on PS Four. Tomb Raider. All these games are available elsewhere. There is some big. There was a couple big games that are kind of hard to get hold of. 
to be honest, they don't really come to mind because, like, you know, stuff like Wild Guns didn't really, it's kind of hard to get. Wild Arms, sorry, it's oh, kind of hard Sam, to get over here. And Sam, Symphony of Night Sweet is in. Symphony of Night is very expensive. But you can actually get it on other systems. Like, yeah. I own Dragon X Chronicles on PSP, which has Symphony of Night I on have it. Symphony of Night on my Xbox One yeah. via Xbox 360. It cost me £2. So, like, you know what I mean? You can get It's probably the most readily available console. Um, over in uh, here, it had some had really nice game cases mm-hmm. um, that, were, that were plastic clamshell, and so they generally speaking pretty easy to get complete in box. Mm. PS One's one of the easiest consoles to get complete in box, actually, other than the Mega Drive, probably. Yeah. Um, and the discs were quite resilient. The black bottom CD discs were quite resilient, so it, it if you got one, it probably was going to play now. Mm. Uh, memory cards can be a little bit hit and miss. Like uh, the unofficial ones tend to break quite a lot, tend to corrupt data. But again, I've not really ever had an issue with PS One memory cards. The thing about PS1, if you're going to get collect PS1, you probably want to get a PS2 or a PS3 mm. to play those games because they, it's backwards compatible and you, why not have a console that can play two types of games instead yeah. of one? But overall, I'd say if you want to collect a retro game from the fifth gen, uh, the, the cheapest, safest option is the PS1. Yeah. And it has a lot of games to this, play. This, this, this sort of like, there's just so many games. There's two pretty And, like, and then if you go start looking at Japanese imports, yeah, and like, you got hundreds, it's, it's like we've, we've been on this before, and I'm, 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 I'm like the I always try and be unbiased because I'm not a big Sony guy. Mm. I, I openly say I'm not a big Sony guy. I was really into the PS1, but like I was never a big PS2 fan, PS3 fan, even PS4. But the PS1 is that good that it really, if you're going to collect a fifth gen console mm. that that has the most bang for your buck, it is the PS1. Yeah, the weird thing. With uh, the PS One, and it's only uh, sort of like thinking about it now. You, we're talking about like the best games, and I go, "What my favorite PS One games are: Metal Gear Solid, mm. Silent Hill, Resident Evil Two, Tekken Three, and Crash Crash." And that none of them are actually really Sony first party games. No, Sony's first party was weird. I suppose at the time, Crash Bandicoot would have been considered first party. But it had a lot of exclusives, mainly due to third party exclusives, and second party exclusives. Mainly due because one Saturn was dead, and the other one was too expensive to yeah, make games they, for. So it basically it was like everything was on it by default. Yeah, that kind they, of they were sense. smart. They watched they watched the mistakes of the three D O and the Jaguar. Yeah, and but basically it's, it's almost like a weird hybrid, the best of all three of the ones mm-hmm. that came before it. Yeah, really. Because um, if you think of Sony now, like the uh, like the PS Four, uh, like. They got so many first party mm. like studios like they they're great, but I think PS One. They, pub- they good... did publish a lot of those games. Yeah, like they, Crash, did, they publish. did publish Crash, and yeah. I think they published Me- uh, Metal Gear as and well, Spyro, and even Final Fantasy. I think. I mean, you can never publish it. You never like true exclusives. Stuff like Siphon Fit was great. Ape yeah. Escape's great. Yeah, they have got them. It's just I don't really think of Ape's like Odyssey, I don't really like think of PS what like Stony exclusives on the PS One. No, the PS One is just the overall. Just well, like by on saying it on like Saturn, I think of like Pounds of Shining, and the next console I think of their games on. Yeah, I don't really think of Sony things when I can I always, I always think the winner always has that like if you look at like PS2 is probably the same mm. and same with like um, 360 like the, the consoles that were massive were like multi-platforms are like mm. the, the, the bread and butter especially the, the later we got mm. but yeah that's really the Playstation I think we both are both in agreement it's probably the best console this generation Yeah, arguably I know people on the forum might not like that but overall I think the PS1 is by far the best for what you can get it has every genre yeah. Now, the last console of the fifth generation was probably the most anticipated console of the generation. Yeah. Arguably, and that is the Nintendo 64. The yeah. Ultra 64, as it was before. Yeah. Came out in Japan in 96 and came out in the West in 97. So it's two years after the PlayStation. Yeah. Let's say about two years after the Saturn as well. It came out at 199. It was the cheapest one because obviously it came out so late. Yeah. But I think it came out and it was cartridge based that's the problem so yeah so Square suddenly they had a prototype of Final Fantasy 7 on 864 soon as it was cartridge based right right. we can't make our game yeah. on your system we're going to go to PlayStation so we'll, we'll, we'll get to that we'll get to the problem in a minute so we'll talk about the, the good things first so in terms of raw power the N64 is actually incredibly powerful yeah. actually more powerful than PS1 yeah um, the polygons per second the textures all that kind of stuff is absolutely coloured everything Absolutely amazing. Only one thing it doesn't do. Yeah. It only outputs in composite. That is its best output. Is composite um, video or yeah. S video if you're in America is the best one. Doesn't do SCAR. Big nowadays that's a big problem. But when we get to that when we get to collecting. But at the time, okay, so it was cartridge based. Cartridge did have some advantages. So yeah. it Down stopped time. stopped games getting hacked. Yeah. And it, loading times were basically non existent on the console. Um, Save onto cartridge. 
you could save onto cartridges. You didn't need a memory card. Um, it came with four controller ports, which is basically the, the high point of the console. So you didn't have to buy a multi-tap or, or anything else. Well, none of the other consoles had four ports, so fair play to them on that. It was built for multiplayer. Yeah. Very strange controller. The famous three trident controller. I actually have no problem with the controller. I've used to, I've I, that problem. I played N64 yesterday uh, with a friend for like two hours. I had no problem with the controller. It, I think if you go in and you don't know how to hold it, that's your mm. that's the problem. Once you figure it out, it's fine. Um, had, had stuff like um, expandable parts of the controller so you'd have rumble and save. You could put memory cards in if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, overall, it had the best selling game was Super Mario 64. It was 11.6 million. It's actually the best selling single first party game of this generation. Yeah. And that sums up the console. So the console's big thing is Nintendo games. Yeah. You buy an N64, and you bought an N64 at the time for Nintendo games. Yeah. And now you would collect one for Nintendo games. So it had Ocarina of Time, one of the best games of all time. Majora's Mask, one of the best games of all time. Super Mario 64, one of the best games of all time. The rare games like Perfect Dark, GoldenEye, Banjo-Kazooie, Conquest by the Fair Day, all outstanding. Mario Kart, Mario Kart Super 64, Smash Bros. Super Smash Bros. Pokemon Stadium. Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2. Pokemon, Pokemon Snap. Um, you had the Mario Party games were fantastic. Mario Golf, Mario Tennis. All the Camelot sports games yeah. were great. All of those games on Nintendo games had Kirby, um, Crystal uh, Shards, yeah. had F-Zero X, Paper Mario, all these games. Uh, Star Fox 64. Star Fox, Lila Wars, Wars yeah. for, our, for yeah. our friends here in the UK. Yeah. If you're in, on the forum listening to this and you clearly know about the N64, you know everything, same as everything since and before, Nintendo games are why you buy an sixty four. Yeah, and to be honest with you, just about all of them are brilliant. Yeah, there's uh, there's a couple said, of bad ones. Uh, just about, about like from the N sixty four. When we did the console vote a few years ago, uh, before the Wii U game, N sixty four won best console. So that's I I can imagine the reason it won best console was because of the games. Yeah, but it almost won strangely worst console. As yeah, well. um, a couple of people on there like vote for it didn't did not like it at. At all, I remember they had like problems with like the controller didn't think the graphics hold up as well, and like they didn't think like the games hold up. Personally, I think nearly all the games hold up pretty well. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about we'll go through our experience first, and then we'll, we'll do we'll do the round because actually yeah. it's a very interesting point you make. So from our experience, like I said, I actually didn't have an N sixty four. Um, I wanted one. I always wanted one. I borrowed one for a month, which uh, off uh, my dad swapped our PS one with a friend's N sixty four for a month. I think he wanted to do it full time, but my mum's like, well, "What are you doing?" Mm. Um, so I actually only played Banjo Kazooie. Uh, WCW NW at Revenge and oh there was one more game I think it was Wipeout 64 it wasn't a great game whatever it was and they were the only games I played on 64 at the time always wanted one never didn't buy one until last month which mm-hmm. I had to buy very cheaply for £6 and I love it but so that's my experience with 64 from what I played at the time I, I loved WCW NW at Revenge mm. it was fantastic I loved Banjo Kazooie but that's really it. None of my friends really had N sixty four to rule PS one guys. It said there was more of a, I saw I played more Saturn than I played N sixty four at the time. I played more Jaguar than I played N sixty four at the time. So yeah, that's really it. I know you, you probably have a little bit more. Yeah, uh, my nan won one in the Landrex uh, competition. No, it's, that is a claim to fame right there, Chris McGill. You are one of the luckiest people as well, by the way. Yeah. He gets this stuff all the time. Yeah, so my nan won an N sixty four. I got it for she kept it back for Christmas. Um, so I got that for Christmas. Well, and my uncle that year bought me an N64 game. And he bought me Star Wars, Empire, uh, Shadows of the Empire. Remember, 60- oh yeah. yeah. See, this is the thing. It's like that's like I forgot a few other bits from my uncle on that. But the reason, like, it was just that one game because 64 games were like 60, 70 quid because of the cartridge. Because, of the, ca- because yeah. of the cartridges. So I remember. I don't know what year it was though because I I think I remember um, renting Ocarina of Time from. The video sh- uh, video shop, but then that was ninety nine, wasn't it for Ocarina of Time, I believe, and that just seems and that's just too late because the house we were in at the time when I got my N sixty four Ocarina of Time would have not been out. Yes, that's ninety eight. I can confirm it was t- November twenty first, nineteen ninety eight. And uh, no, what was it in Europe? I think it's everything, isn't it? No, I think it was later in Europe. December. December. So, so yeah, it was yeah, 98, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but see, to, to me, that doesn't, like, add up for the house we were living in at the time. And plus, sorry, you've got to remember you were eight years, eight or nine years old, so you're not, your memory's not going to be... No, but I know what, what house I got. So I think, I don't know if I actually did play that at the time or not, you but I, def- <laughs> I definitely remember playing Super Mario 64 yeah. and not actually liking it. 
Yeah. It's just the thing. Uh, to be fair, I've known you for like three years, and every time there's a popular game, you tend to not. So. No, it's the, shout out to the Breath of like, the Wild fans out there. No, like <laughs> I like I had my obviously my PS One and my platform was a crash spiral. Yeah, that's fair. Obviously with the the Dual Shock controller well, at the time, it wasn't even the Dual Shock. I didn't expect. I mean that, and obviously get this N sixty four with like this weird ass controller, mm. and like I don't know, it's like Mario is like this big open platform, uh, where like obviously Crash is like more like level based and yeah. stuff. And still at the time, if I was like six, seven, eight or something, I don't know if like the game is like too complicated. If that kind of makes sense, because I didn't really play Final Fantasy seven exactly for like yeah. a seven year old. <laughs> I was playing like your Spyros, your Crashes, your Tekkens, and so, I was so you're admitting you're a bit simple, Chris. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I think with I think with a game like that, to be to be fair to you, I think. The reason I think it's so beloved, mm. I mean, it's a, it's Mario Four is a great game. Yeah. I, oh no, I, no, it's not. It's in my twenty five yeah, top twenty five yeah. games of all time because I've played when it you were, since and it's amazing. If you like, if you'd got the N sixty four when it and that was like your only game, I think you adapt to it. Mm. And if you didn't have a PS one, like I'm, the stories I always hear for people talk about, especially in the, like my American friends, that it launched with basically just that and yeah. uh, Pilot Wings, I think, and that was like the only game they had for like six months, and so they would force themselves to play yeah. it. Like that's the only console they had. But you're right, it's a very different game. to, And it was a different game to anything that came before it, and that was why it's so revolutionary. Um, the thing is, that when we, we're gonna get to, we'll get into it now. Mm. So the reason I think that it's the best and the worst console on like the forum chats and stuff yeah. is because the individual games are all timeless. The yeah. Ocarina of Times, your Mario 64, even your Mario Kart 64, are so timeless and they're good. You can play them now and they're great. Yeah. But the console isn't. Yeah. So the console's biggest two... For me, the biggest two problems... Is the cartridge based stuff makes it expensive? Yeah, too expensive. And that was the biggest thing. Too expensive. Well, I remember, like even now, the games obviously some obviously are cheap expensive. But I remember Resident Evil Two. It, was, it came out it was sixty huge, nine yeah. nine sixty nine ninety nine on N sixty four, and it was a platinum game on PS uh, one for nineteen ninety nine. And it was twenty nine ninety nine on Dreamcast, which was yeah. a superior console. Yeah. So it's you know what I mean, but it was that and. It has terrible, terrible video output. That I really experienced that over the last couple of days. I've been playing it with um, a friend of mine that came down to visit, and playing a composite console in 2018 on a 50-inch TV is absolutely disgusting. It just mm. doesn't bring through a, a correct level of crispness because obviously there's a difference between resolution and picture clarity. Mm. And composite is just awful. RGB Scott is where you want to go with retro consoles. You can at least see what's going on, and it it really struggles to make the games hold up. Had really bad all the games. Almost all the games had horrendous frame issues, mm. despite how powerful the console was. It's just because they had to cram and compress so much into those cartridges. Like some games, like uh, the Torah games, they would just run terribly unless you had. The I think Goldeneye. Goldeneye Gold runs like, like seven frames a second. Sense. Like honestly, like play that four player multiplayer. It's like seven, eight, nine. Like it's amazing we managed to play that at the time. But again, you can get the expansion port for certain games. Mm. And like Perfect Dark looks great. But yeah, they, I mean that's why. And I've, it had no third party. It, it did. No... Ha- it did have. Fun. But like you're talking about, like the it had PS- like Hudson Soft. You're, and people talk- like you're talking about like the PS1. Like it had RPGs coming out. Like well, RPGs. There was two, wasn't there? It was uh, Quest Six, which was terrible. And Paper Mario. I was three then, because Ogre Battle, which is okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then there was Paper Mario, which was amazing. But then, like we said, it's first party. Yeah. Um, the first party games are all amazing. It's yeah, it's such a really fun. You know, like Lion Wars. I remember playing Lion Wars in Curry's and being like, "This is amazing." No, but my real, like I said, my Nam one one. I think I just. I can't remember. I must have sold it or traded it in or something. Or I just didn't like it. But then when we had the um, shop, I had an orange N sixty four. That was another thing I didn't. We didn't talk about. Is they had the Fantastic series. Of, yeah. They had loads of different. The Nintendo always done like different variants really well. And the N sixty four was beautiful. I had the, the Pikachu one, which was great. Yeah, I had all the, the coloured ones. So I had, the, I had the orange uh, uh, one and like I had the full set controllers. And at one point. I folded it a few years ago. I had like a 50, 60 game collections for the N64, nearly all boxed as well. But it was nearly, it was like 50 games, and that's all you would ever want on the 64 because it was like mm. all exclusive. It's got like 200 games, but it was like, yeah, that, 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 that's it. And the problem now is nearly all of them are on something else. It's the same problem almost, as the PS1. Almost, almost every single. I mean, this gen is like, because it's so easy to port these games now because they're just, they use such low memory. Mm. Um, a lot of them have had remakes as well for the N64 in particular. Like almost all the big ones have really, if you think about it. Like the Mario, like the multiplayer ones haven't really because there's just no point. Yeah. See, that's the other thing. It's like Smash Bros. is good on like the melee tops there, the double dash top sixty four. Um, yeah, that's the that's the Nintendo trail. Yeah. Really. So um, like 
those sort of games you want to play like the better like the superior like the newer superior versions and then Ocarina of Time you want to play Ocarina of Time 3D really yeah um, or you play it on like the GameCube so you can have like a different video output for instance well the video output is the big thing for me it's last like Ocarina of Time is on the GameCube mm-hmm. yeah. and stuff like that you can get them on the, the collection that's the first time I played Ocarina of Time yeah so I'm the exactly same I played it with my, my Wind Waker double disc that yeah. I got um, yeah and the first time, like, like when I got the shop, uh, we had the sh- I was shopping at the Orange Room. Like the first time I played sixty four, and it's like, uh yeah, I get why Mario sixty four is like so good, and it's like in one of my top twenty five games of all time. I didn't so finish that game until I got the DS version on three mm. DS because yeah. I could use the stick on three yeah. DS. I, I I know the the N sixty four version is better, but yeah, that's the that's the first time I actually beat the game. Um, so overall, I think the N sixty four is it's totally the second best um, library of games. Mm. And arguably has more. It probably, has the best exclusive. It probably has the higher percentage of great games. Yeah. Like the great to shit ratio on the Xbox was higher than the PS One. It's higher than all the, the PS One. Just has more choice. Yeah. Um, and like I said, more I choice think of genres. Yeah, well. exactly. Which if I think you want a fair. racing game, you have you have the Crash Team Racing, or you have a Grand Turismo. You don't just have um, Vito, Vito, uh, Volkswagen Beetle Racing mm, yeah. and Mario Kart sixty four and Diddy Racing and stuff. We haven't talked about the sixty four DD, which is because it's very little to talk about. It was an add on. They only come out in Japan very late in the life cycle. Added a lot of power, but they just did like ten games, and I was only Doshin like, Doshin Gi- Doshin Animal, Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing, and again that was mostly Japan. It yeah. actually was all Japan. They both came to GameCube. And they both everything came to GameCube pretty much, apart from the F Zero track mm, editor. But yeah. I think that was in GX. But that's why yeah. I played GX. And they had a Mario like paint. Stuff. They had Mario Paint and music stuff and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, the N sixty four was strange. So when it comes to collecting, so this is the, it's the worst of five. Wow, it's, I disagree on the worst of the five because it's the, an N64 is not expensive to get hold of. I no. got hold of one for six pounds because yeah. people thought it was broken. Yeah. Tip: If you want to buy, if somebody, someone's selling you, someone's listing it as 64 is broken. It's and said it, 64 and, it won't be broken, and it powers up. Yeah. It's not broken. Yeah. Or it's very rarely broken. Yeah. Right? So you can get an N64 at a reasonable price for about thirty. I think you can get one for a good, good one for thirty. Yeah. Not with a controller. But you can get controllers fairly cheap as well. Third party controllers are fine as well. Even now, people make them the great. The main games are actually quite cheap if you don't mind car only. Mm. So, this is the big issue that we had earlier with the Jaguar and the Saturn the cardboard boxes. So, if you want a complete good condition collection, NC4 is very expensive and it's not worth it because you can get Majora's Mask on 3DS with better graphics in a case for half the price. Yeah. And that's this is the problem, I think. If yeah, you want to buy a cheap used 2DS, like. 60 quid or something as well yeah. although because they've shut down the Wii shop mm. and Wii U doesn't have the same level of support because it doesn't have a GameCube adapter that you can actually use mm. for multiplayer I still think the N64 is worth it I think Mario Party 1, 2 and 3 mm. Mario Tennis yeah. GoldenEye Perfect Dark are still yeah, good ways to play the game the thing is I would sooner play like Mario Kart Double Dash and Smash oh, I, Melee and... I agree but if, you, if you're nostalgic for the 64 yeah then I think for multiplayer, 100% is worth it. Mario 64 still holds up. The big issue, like I've been going on about, is the video output is poor. Mm. And that is the only real issue. So if you have a Wii and you have the games, like my, my best friend has the Mario Party games on his Wii from when we were at university, having the console output in a clear thing and playing it that way is better. Yeah. If you, if you just want to play Mario 64, but you want to play the 64 version, although the Wii U version isn't, hasn't got amazing emulation, it's good enough. Yeah. To play, or you can play the DS version, but I think it is that's the biggest problem with the 64 and to an extent the PS1 is all the best games have been put somewhere else. Mm. So, for collecting, that can be an issue. On the plus points, the multiple colors of console and controller are very interesting to collect for. Yeah, hasn't got a huge library of games, has some rare games, has like your clay fighters and stuff that you just won't get, it's not worth the money. Um, it's very interesting to have on your shelf and stuff. And it, like I said, it's reliable, it will work. Mm. But I think if you're going to collect one, I would definitely choose the PS1. Um, I think the PS1 is the easiest to collect for, and I think I've, that's why I said it was the worst. I think the 64 is the hardest to collect for. Because I think if you're really going to you know, think about collecting and just not playing, I think you're going to want boxes and stuff. Yeah. Because if you want to play, play N64 games, you're going to be able to do that on a Wii U or a 3DS, or yeah. you, might, you, know, you might have had them already. But if you want to collect 64, I think it is the hardest one because you're going to want it all boxed and nice. And, and yeah, I mean, there is obviously alternate options. Obviously, Rose Color Gaming do their plastic yeah. clamshell um, cases, and if, and if I'm honest with you, if you're going to get 100% NC4 collection, that's what I would do because mm. I just don't personally think the... the... That's how I've got... Um, I haven't got um, the... Pla- I've got like a 
cheaper sort of plastic off my um, yeah. Zelda Game Boy games, for instance. Yeah, like I would totally like it's that's the way. Like, Rose Cook Game actually do replacement cases for Super Nintendo as well. Yeah, um, which is probably worth it. But like I would say overall, PS One for me, uh, for me it could go PS One Saturn Jag. 64 3DO mm. I think the 3DO is I love the 3DO and I love the Jag as well but I love the 3DO it's just the console's too expensive mm. and the games just there isn't although the N64 has their games elsewhere those games are still good quality yeah. and that's probably the, the big issue I think with 3DO but overall I think this gen for me is really the start of modern gaming yeah it has a lot of the like a lot of the consoles had basic internet I mean the Saturn in particular had a really good even still works I believe mm. in Japan has internet connectivity had the, the add-ons are starting to die out only really the jaguar and the 64 had like real add-ons like actual hardware add-ons there's yeah. stuff you could put on the other consoles but real that kind of thing cd drives were basically the, the way forward beyond this everything used mm. dvd or gd rom after this and then in the gen after um the shying away from the arcade really was from 93 to 99 very very apparent in these consoles like from the early yeah. the earliest consoles very arcadey and then you look at the PS1 and the N64 yeah, and they're PS1, very not. PS1, it was games you sat down and played for like the, for the story. Yeah. And that, so. As for what holds up the most, I would say PS1. Is that fair? Is that yeah, holds up the I, most? I, 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 uh, yes. Gameplay. No. It's, it's, if, we just, if we were just talking about consoles, mm. if we were talking about like, if you, so if you're not playing them anywhere else, mm. I think PS1. Yeah. If you can play them anywhere else, I think the N64 games are playable. Yeah, now. I think this is the thing. Like, it depends what 64 game because I think six Mario 64 due to the art style and um, obviously it's you know it's gameplay it still holds up. Like GoldenEye, I had no problem playing, but I think due to like I hate like I can't I, play. It. I think yeah, due I to the frame play. rate and stuff like that, I think things like that don't hold yeah, up. We try to play, but there isn't that many. Not... There isn't that many games like that though. Most of them are colourful plat. You know, you know Nintendo art style so art style, yeah, so they yeah. hold up because if you look at something like. Um, Resident Evil One, um, that does not really hold up. Two just about holds up, I think, on the PS One, but one doesn't. Yeah, and even then, you'd play that on GameCube if you're going to play. If you're going to play on a retro console, yeah. um, I think Paper Mario. I, I think Paper Mario is the best looking game on all the consoles. Yeah, it's just honest, due to so. the, just due to the art style, yeah. I think. But you know, if the gameplay is good enough, like in Final Fantasy Seven or something, it does, yeah. you, know, you kind of get away with it. And obviously, it's um, overall. I think it's one of our. I think it's my third favorite gen. Yeah, I, I, I was really hard. I know what the next gen is my favorite. It's gen. my favorite as well. But that, we'll talk about the sixth gen. But I don't in, in know. Then. Like, it's between this and most probably the Mega Drive. The, the seventh there. is my second. Yeah, I do. Cut, now, see, I, I'm not sure if the seventh is that actual good. The seventh is my second because I played a lot of games. And mm. when we get, if if and when we get to that chat, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, overall, my favorite console of this gen is the PS One. Yeah, same here. Um, although I love the N64, and I, I've only again I've only owned one since mm. I was twenty eight, mm. so it's not like I can. Yeah. You know, I'm not the guy to chat to about that. Saturn's actually pretty close. A Saturn may even be above the sixty four for me, mm. which is weird. I know, but yeah, I won't upset too many like, four mics like, by like the sixty four <laughs> would most that. probably have like top 10 consoles of all time it is definitely up there due to its quality of games yeah the game quality is the best and i think this gen is the, mm. it's really the beginning of the um the 3d takeover as well and yeah. the games are, are it not... definitely showed the big leap from 2d to yeah like, exactly. 3D in, in the whole the i don't think this gen holds up as much as the next one but that's natural i think the next one is the most hold up mm. um retro console stuff before well, obviously the 2d ones do as well but yeah but yeah that's our fifth gen fifth gen chat yeah. It's only a solid hour and ten minutes, Chris, for us it's pretty good. Yeah. Um next episode will not be in seven months' time, it'll probably be in the next couple of weeks and will be the Dreamcast special. Yeah, you definitely uh, want to do Dreamcast on its own. Yeah, I i i we've got too much to talk about. Yeah. It's it's Especially one of those things. I owe over two hundred games. You have like two hundred games for it. It's probably one of my favourite consoles of all time. Yeah. Um I've got magazines, we've got like a lot of games and stuff I we can might go through. Dish, uh, bring out my ma- So out we'll my we'll do definitely do a Dreamcast like special. It's the twentieth anniversary of the Japanese release this year, so mm. we will talk about the Dreamcast. Everyone's gonna hate that because Sega, but um, and then we'll do the sixth, the rest of the sixth gen chat, which is the GameCube, the Xbox, and the PS2. And to be fair, we have a lot to talk about with those as well, which is yeah. why I wanted to, because I think we'd have done a two-hour podcast if yeah. we'd done the other three. And I, we haven't got time for a two-hour podcast. Um, but yeah, if you like what you hear, you want to chat to us at any point, please follow Chris at Massive Das yes, on that's correct. Twitter and our Massive Bio has on YouTube. Was no, it's Massive, Massive Das. Mass you've, you've officially got Massive Das yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, it should be. It should be I must Massive. say it every episode. Yeah. Um, you follow me at UF Gizmo everywhere. Yeah. Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, whatever. And we'll be back 
in the future. So have a lovely, lovely day. Enjoy.